Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today I'm going to show you quite a few tips on how to use the filbert brush. Now, of course, you guys probably know that you can use the filbert brush to paint almost anything. So I'm really going to focus on a lot of the most important brush strokes that you can use. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see here, I went ahead and just mixed up a couple of quick color streams. And if you want to know how to do this, <laughs> we have a video for that. Well, it's our color mixing video. All right, well, anyway, so I want to teach you some important brush strokes. First off, let me just go over the brush strokes. I'm going to do this with a gray. This is wet up here as well. That's just a little bit of blue, black, and white. And I put it up there so that we have a wet background to work with. And it's more you know, like a regular painting. No reason to practice on something that's not going to be regular, right? Because then it's going to be totally different when you go to do it in a real painting. Make it as real as possible for yourself. So wet the background if you're going to work on a wet background, which we do. All right, here's the brush strokes. First brush stroke is simply tapping. And look, there, just simply tap. And obviously that's amazing for trees. And that's probably what you know this brush stroke can do. A lot of good trees. So that's your tapping brush strokes. Obviously, you've got your normal sliding brush strokes, right? You can just slide and usually artists will tell you to do overlapping X's and that's a really good idea because it helps to keep the edges feathered and it's just a lot better. So there's your overlapping X's by sliding. Another brush stroke that I tend to use a lot is kind of this sort of a thing. That kind of stabbing it. I usually kind of get up here on the brush, although I don't normally recommend that. You kind of have to sometimes to stab at it. That's really good for rocks, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then, of course, you can do scrubbing. And I notice I'm tilting here. You can set your brush down and scrub. You can do this with or without paint on your, on your brush. This is good for clouds, good for seascapes, you know, foam in the water, all that good stuff. Waterfalls. There you go. So you got scrubbing action, kind of a slamming action. And this works, you know, vertically for grass. There's a lot of different different things you can do with that. You got your painting on, like a brush stroke, like when, when you think about brush strokes, that's what I think about, right? And then you got tapping. And all of these, this is like the, the most important four brush strokes, and everything is kind of built using this. So let me show you what I mean. Let me grab my color streams here. Let me go with our light color. And I'm not worried about making a painting or anything. I'm just gonna show you. We are gonna use the tapping stroke and the brushing brush stroke. All right, first off, the brushing one. Take this color, I'm gonna come right up here, and I'm just gonna paint it on using my overlapping brush strokes. Cool, huh? So, this is gonna create like a little background forest. See that? So you got that. Let me do a little more sunlight. Now, sometimes you can use an overlapping stroke that feels a little bit more like a leaf, and here's how you do it. It's still your overlapping strokes, but see, you kind of slow it down a little, and you kind of leave a little more air. And that helps, you know? See how that looks a little more leaf-like? Sometimes you don't overlap them, sometimes you just kind of touch them and, and stroke them, but it's the same idea. Just kind of a sliding brush stroke. There, some people refer to these as little C shapes or little comma shapes, and they kind of look like that. But bunched together, they, they look like a bunch of little leaves and limbs and all that good stuff out here in the forest. So that's that. And then look, you can scrub. Remember the scrubbing stroke? See how I can scrub to soften things at the bottom? I'm going to slide down here. And I'm going to use my, my overlapping strokes again. But this time, see how you can really build that forest out? That's so cool. This time, I'm going to actually tap it. So this time I just, I tap in the paint and I come up here and I tap. And this creates a little bit more of a, more of a detailed leaf look versus the soft open leaf look. Just a different way to do it. As you come forward, you want to change your brush strokes to give different textures because things in nature do have different textures as they come into, into the foreground, of course. Cool, huh? So anyway, I know it's this stuff you've seen before, but I'm trying to explain it in a way that makes sense as to why we choose to use a certain brush stroke for a certain object. So there you go. Let me take a little brown. Remember the stabbing stroke? Watch this. See, I kind of go up on it normally you're back here on the brush. I'm gonna come way up here and stab it. Isn't that cool? And this kind of creates little little rocks. Obviously, this is more important in the highlight. It doesn't really matter in the in the shadow, but there you go. So you can just scrub it in the shadow. But hey, you're practicing. You can do whatever you want. 
right up here. A little light. Now here's where the stabbing kind of comes in handy. See that? And it makes for a nice kind of eh, simple road effect. There. So anyway, that kind of gives you the thought of a little little road back there and that's really cool. Let's work on a waterfall and I want to do that very quickly here because because I don't want to waste a lot of time right <laughs> there we go I'm gonna scrub there it is the scrubbing stroke over here the scrubbing stroke this is probably your number one brush stroke you're gonna use most of the time I'm not saying it's the most important because it's pretty simple there's no way to mess this up if I had to say one was most important it's probably the overlapping X strokes yeah, it's just my thought though. There you go. And then of course you want to dirty up your waterfall a little and then give yourself a little bit of a shoreline. There we go. Now back to my other color stream. I got some blue here. I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my sliding brush strokes to, to bring that right in. Now the filbert brush, the reason I'm not just saying, oh, here's all the things you can paint with a filbert brush because you could do everything. I, I could sit here for, you know, all day and not paint everything that you can paint with a filbert brush. So instead of doing that, I think it's way better if I just kind of show you the brush strokes that I use when painting with the filbert brush. When you use any other brush, really, your brush strokes change a little bit, but the filbert brush is so standard. These are some good brush strokes to learn with it. I'm going to wipe this off with a paper towel because that's just what we do. Got to keep the, got to keep all the paint that's on the surface of the canvas off. That'll cause problems. All right, here we go. I'm going to use my sliding brush stroke again. Less pressure, but same exact brush strokes. Once you master your brush strokes, boy, does painting get easy. Mm, way easier. Then you got to figure out composition and stuff and color and lighting. But hey, if you got the brush strokes down, that stuff is way easier. So practice what you're doing here. Practice your brush strokes. Get all that down real good. All right, now take that and I'm going to use my scrubbing brush stroke, which is definitely something I'd be using for a cloud as well. Right, if you want to do clouds, and I'll show you that in a second. There. Now, let me show you that cloud. Let me get an older brush. <laughs> there we go. Right up here. And we can paint a cloud. For clouds, I really like to come back on the brush, actually, because that makes it easier. There. Take a little blue and black. Make a gray. Something like that. And then you can even... Using the same scrubbing action, scrub a, a little shadow into your cloud. The basic structure of the cloud is done with the filbert brush, or it can certainly be effectively done with a filbert brush. And using the scrubbing brush stroke. Let me show you some rocks. Actually, we could do the rocks over here. Uh, back to this brush, because it's newer, it'll come to a better point. Let me take a little black and brown. And right up here, using kind of this, the same stroke that I showed you over here, but this time it's going to be a little bit more controlled. And we just did this recently in a painting together. So we're just going to underpaint a lot of rocks. And you can just, again, scrub this in. Load up our brush with the highlight color. And again, I'm just going to stab it. Come in and stab. There. So a lot of combination of, of strokes here to create the form of rocks. You don't want to just do one or two rocks and say, well, there, we're done. Nah, that's not good. There, and then of course, as they get bigger, you kind of go back into the sliding brush stroke and you kind of do more, you know, a little more detail in them. Now, you can obviously slide your brush to create trees as well. See that? This is simple. You can take your green, which I have right here, and I just want to show you tapping again. Tapping to create an evergreen. I know this is so normal, but this is a brush stroke that's really, really good to use, especially as you're learning. You can try trickier brush strokes later, but this is an easy one that creates a good result every time. Well, at least most of the time. 
Now for a background evergreen, you can actually just take this and, and slide it and make a messy looking little background evergreen that doesn't look good until you stick another messy one next to it and another one. And then all of a sudden, you have a fairly detailed row of messy little background trees that look pretty good because each one kind of melts into the next and it makes for a good effect. And again, you'll see the different brush strokes playing off each other. The one that is tapped on has more texture and comes forward. The one that's stroked on, although it's the same tree, it's pushed way back. So it kind of gives you a good idea of the reason I use different brush strokes when I use them and kind of some of my thought processes I'm painting. All right, well, we're done with this quick tip video. I really hope you learned a lot, especially if you're a beginner. This lesson is valuable to you because you want to really practice these techniques and kind of understand them as you go so that painting makes more sense. Even if you've been painting for a few years, though, continue to practice because it actually helps quite a bit. I hope you learned a lot. Thanks for watching.